Hi, everybody. It's Marcella Nordbeck Richardson, the artist who's been living the artist way, Julia Cameron's book, for the last year. It is December, so it's the 12th month of the year, 12th and final month of the book, and it's very bittersweet for me. Um, this past year has been an amazing journey of highs and lows, thankfully more highs than lows. Um, and ending on some amazing highs. Um, it's been a very emotional day for me. I've been um, coming up against a lot of resistance. I've been trying to record this video. I've had all kinds of interruptions today, so I had to stop recording the video. Uh, and I've just been really struggling to, um, to figure out what I want to say, what I want to share, how I want to summarize this 12th and final chapter and how to summarize this this year um, I really don't know that I can fully put into words what this journey has been like for me I'm getting teary-eyed and I've just started <laughs> well okay so let's talk about chapter 12 first um, so chapter 12 is titled recovering a sense of faith and Julie, Julia begins by talking about um, saying that we're going to take a special look at last minute sabotage. And as always, Julia is just <laughs> somehow she knows that what's coming up for me on this journey is exactly what then she writes about in the next chapter. And um, this book has just been so supportive of me in my journey this past year. Um, yeah. I think this is going to be a long post because I'm really struggling to find, like I said, the words to convey what I'm feeling. And I know I'm coming across as emotional, but the truth is, is what I'm feeling is just my heart bursting with so much love for Julia Cameron, who... I would love to meet someday, um, but who I have not personally met, I've never corresponded with directly, and yet she's been such an amazing guiding light in my life. I'm just so grateful for where I am in my life and in my career, and there's no doubt in my mind that I am where I'm at because of this book. It's been life-changing. Thankfully, I have tissue that is within reach, so just give me a moment here to collect myself. Um, I've decided I'm just going to keep recording through. I have tried and retried to restart recording this video because every time I start talking, I keep getting really emotional. Um, but if I don't just commit to this, I'm going to be up all night trying to convey to you... Um, my final thoughts on this journey. Okay, so chapter 12. So the chapter is about faith. Essentially, it's about continuing to have faith in ourselves on our journey. And um, Julia talks about what a friend of hers helped Julia come up with um, an expression called escape velocity. I'm going to read part of this chapter to you. It's It'd be hard, it, it's going to be easier for me to read it than try to explain the concept. So Julia writes, My friend Michelle has a theory, a theory born of long and entangled romantic experience. In a nutshell, it goes, when you're going to leave them, they know. The same theory applies to creative recovery. It occurs when you reach what Michelle calls escape velocity. As she puts it, there's this time for blast off, like a NASA space launch, and you're heading for it when wham, you draw to you the test. The test? Yeah, the test. It's like when you're all set to marry the nice guy, the one who treats you right, and Mr. Poison gets wind of it and phones you up. Ah, the whole trick is to eva evade the test. We all draw to us the one test. That's our total nemesis. So basically, it's like... You know, we're totally on track. We're on the right path. Everything's clicking and coming together. And then wham, you get that test of, 
are you going to stay on course or are you going to let something or someone else completely derail you and take you down another path? And that has come up for me twice in this year long journey, maybe more, but two particular instances are coming up for me at the moment that I want to share in regards to how the escape velocity theory, um, I can relate to that. The first is, and if you've been following this journey, it's not new to you, that late summer I got promoted at my day job and said yes to that promotion. It required that I work more hours. Um, it resulted in me not having as much time and energy for my art and writing any of my creative pursuits as actually at a point where I was going to have to call people and tell them that I couldn't honor commitments that I'd made. I wasn't going to have time and energy to paint commission paintings, paint some um, some things for some upcoming charity events, to be an event um, that I'd paid to be in. And long story short, that that test invited me to make a really difficult but very necessary decision in taking my life and my career to the next level. And ultimately that resulted me resulted in me leaving my day job back in October. The other test was just this past weekend. Um, I was in a, um, it's called an art boutique. It was a holiday art boutique and craft fair, and I'd never done anything like this before. For the last five years that I've been showing my work, I've been in restaurants and coffee shops, and my church has a fine arts ministry, and I've been showing frequently there over the last few years. Um, but I'd never done anything where I had a booth and it was a one-day event and that I needed to think about having a variety of merchandise at different price points because people coming to this event were going to be doing holiday shopping and looking for stocking stuffers. So it required a lot of pre-planning, um, a lot of designing. I designed and had a calendar printed of my paintings. I created greeting cards. I had just a lot of things that there were price points um, so that everybody could find something creative and unique to give as a holiday gift and, you know, or purchase art for themselves but not have to pay hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to buy my larger original paintings. So I put a lot of time and effort into this event. In fact, for the last four weeks leading up to the event, I was averaging maybe six hours of sleep every night. It just consumed my life. Um, long story short, I, the morning event, I get there early, set up. I'm just in love with my booth and how I set it up. And I'd never done anything like that before. Um, and I got a lot of positive feedback from the fellow artisans who were exhibiting, people who had been exhibiting for years, complimenting me on my booth and asking me for visual merchandising pointers, um, which was just a huge, it was, to say it was a compliment doesn't even express how, how good it felt because it was totally new territory for me. And I kind of am giving you all the backstory because I want you to understand how important this event was for me and um, how much work it was. So I take a photo with my phone and emailed it to a couple of family members and friends and post it on Facebook. And the whole day I was getting amazing feedback and it was a great event, very successful for me, very profitable for me, great feedback on Facebook. Um, and the couple family members, close family members that I sent a photograph to who, whenever I talk to them on the phone, are the first ones to ask me, you know, so if you sold a painting, when was the last time you sold a painting? Well, how much does your painting sell for? And mind you, in my family, when I was growing up, we did not talk about money. Money, religion, and politics, those were three things that were not talked about in my household. Um, so when this person now ask me about the success of my business and they just laser right in for the profitability of it, it feels very invasive. Um, it feels like an intrusion on my privacy. <laughs> and they don't celebrate with me my small accomplishments, like having just a great looking booth, having a booth that got a ton of traffic and having a booth that was very profitable, mind you. Um, 
I sent them a picture and I never got a response. Nothing. Not, hey, it looks great. You know, I know you've been working really hard on this. Have a great day. Nothing. So for me, that was probably the ultimate test <laughs> of that day, this past weekend, really this whole journey. Not getting any feedback from a person who I have been feeling like is very unsupportive and judgmental of my business and my career choices and my life choices. Um, someone who I've spent a lifetime giving a lot of power to, um, that I've been determining my value and my worth by whether or not I feel seen by them, heard by them, understood, supported. And when I didn't get any feedback, despite all of the success of that event, the connections I made with people, because it was a wonderful networking opportunity, I got leads on two more shows, it just, it was so successful on so many levels, I can't even summarize it in, in the time that I have here. Um, despite all the success, I by Sunday night felt like a complete failure because this person that I have been looking for outside of myself for love and validation and approval, they couldn't provide it. They just, for whatever reason, they can't, they don't speak my love language. <laughs> I know that they love me in the way that they're capable of loving me, but the love that I am have been seeking I'm not going to find it there. And I finally realized that. And I finally realized that I have spent an entire lifetime making choices and decisions about my life and the various careers I've had over the decades based on wanting this person's love and validation and their approval and their support and their understanding. And there's been a lot of dreams, a lot of ideas that when I shared with them, that I didn't get support and I let them go. And I'm grateful that, well, one of those things was art. You know, I didn't pursue art after high school because I didn't get the support that I needed at that time. Thankfully, and unfortunately, <laughs> long story short, um, without rehashing my total life story, you know, I did get back onto the creative path, but it hasn't been easy and it required moving about 2,500 miles away from this person to create some healthy boundaries so that I could just find myself and live my life for me. But I realized this past weekend that sort of unbeknownst to myself, I've still been secretly craving their understanding and their support. And Basically, what I learned from Julia from chapter 12 when she talks about the escape velocity and the test is, you know, I'm on this path and everything and everyone else that I encounter is telling me I'm on the right path. You know, too many amazing things happening for me right now to, to, to convey how I know that I'm on the right path. I just know. And yet, I like I mentioned, I've been giving all my power to this other person, and when they don't seem to understand and support the choices I'm making, I'm practically willing to throw it all away. I, I allow their lack of support to allow all these negative, fearful, doubtful thoughts and come, and come into my mind, and I'm done. It doesn't support me. And um, that's where I'm at. I think, gosh, there's been so many things that have come out of this year for me. But realizing that not everyone's going to understand me, like me, understand or like my work, whether it's my paintings, my writings, or any other way that I choose to show up creatively or express myself in this lifetime, and 
to allow someone outside of me to determine if I stay on the path that's calling to me, that's just, that's crazy. <laughs> and it's sad that I realized I, I spent most of my life living that way. And I'm grateful that finally at 40, I'm, I've become more aware of my behavior and that I can course correct and you know it's unfortunate that they don't want to celebrate my wins with me but that's their choice and I am no longer going to get in my own way by allowing someone who isn't a fan <laughs> essentially um, to dictate the direction I take with my life and my art and my career um, so yeah that's a huge takeaway from this program and that's just one of many amazing gifts that I've gotten from Julia and um, just this whole 12 month journey of living the RS way <sighs> this is already a long post but I did want to share with you a few things that I am working on um, you know kind of the okay so this is done what next um, I mentioned I think in my last post I'm working on three commission paintings for two different clients um, two for one gentleman a large painting for um, a lovely lady busy doing that I'm also getting ready for a two-woman show in February I will be in the front gallery of a saint gallery in Denver from third Friday in February through first Friday in March um, I'm continuing to take some online courses um, let's see here what am I taking um, I signed up for Chris Carr's spotlight it's kind of a marketing PR course I signed up for say uh, what is her name Sarah Ahern Bellamere she has a bit called called painted pages and it's a lovely little um, creativity book and she talks about how she sets up her studio, how she utilizes sketchbooks to help fuel her creativity. Um, and she is a mixed media artist. She mixes mixed media with painting. So I signed up to do her four week e-course that starts middle of January. And then I also signed up for um, an e-course. I don't remember the exact title of it. Jeannie Oliver down in Colorado Springs here in Colorado has organized it. It's her and eight other artists. Something along the lines of studying with the masters and um, these nine artists are going to talk about their um, influencers, other artists, um, the old masters that are no longer living, that have influenced them, and how you take your exposure, whether it's a class you're taking or other artists that have influenced you, and how you allow it to influence your creative art making, yet still expressing your own unique voice. So I'm very excited about that class. And then in terms of, you know, kind of replacing my monthly reading now that I'm done rereading um, The Artist Way, I'm reading a new book called Life Signs by Alex. I don't know how to pronounce Alex's last name, so you can see it there on the screen. Um, she is a writer here in um, Metro Denver. I actually live in a suburb called Littleton. Alex lives practically down the street. Um, she's a novelist. She writes fiction. And um, actually, about four or five years ago, I attended one of her lectures where she talked about her creative process, and she calls it life signs. Um, basically, it's listening to your intuition and being observant of the serendipitous synchronistic events in your life and allowing them to guide your path. Um, basically, Alex and I have been Facebook friends for a few years and she saw one of my Artist Way posts and offered to gift me her book as an alternative creative approach. Because um, for her, I don't think the Artist Way resonated with her and she developed her own creative process and so that's outlined in life science I started reading it today and I can't put it down I'm really looking forward to diving into it because um, definitely my intuition and just those kind of magical mystical experiences in life definitely guide me on my path but I think Alex explains it in a way where we can be more mindful and aware of it and take those experiences and apply it to our life so that we 
live in less fear and more faith and faith ties in with the 12th chapter of the artist way so it's all it's all tying together <laughs> so i'm 20 minutes into this post um so much more i want to share in wrapping up this year-long journey um but I'll try to laser. Basically, I want to thank everybody who's been watching, who's been reading, who has taken the time to post comments on YouTube, on the blog, to message me, to email me. I've met and connected with just the most amazing, beautiful, creative souls out there throughout the United States, on the other side of the planet. And it's really it's really cool because being a creative person, especially now being fully self-employed and pursuing my endeavors, my creative endeavors full time, it can be rather isolating. So I really love it when the work that I'm doing in the world and the ideas that I'm sharing when they resonate with somebody else and that you take the time to comment or to write, it means the world to me. Um, you know, I create and I express because I because I need to. I can't even explain why I need to, but it's been showing my work and putting my work out into the world, whether it's my paintings or the essays I've written or the blogs that I've posted. When I connect with other people, it just, for me, ultimately, I feel like that connection is what it's all about because I think we all want to sit to feel seen and heard and to feel understood and so when I connect with other people I don't know it's it's validating and I don't mean validating in that I'm on the right path with my career it's like it's validating my humanity my spirituality you know I just it makes me feel like I don't know, I can't even right now find the words to articulate how good it feels to to connect with other people. I'm just I'm so grateful for everybody's support. And while the last year has I mentioned there's been more highs than lows, there's been some low points and everyone's comments and support has definitely there's been days where it's been the wind in my sails. So again, thank you and I guess my final, the final thing I want to say is keep listening to your heart. I believe that if you have been watching this 20 plus video today and any of my other videos that you have heard a similar call, you hear that creative call, you feel it. Maybe you're expressing yourself. Maybe you haven't given yourself permission to yet. Wherever you are on your journey, in your life, on your creative path, love yourself, honor yourself, honor those feelings, honor those ideas that want to be birthed and expressed through you. Don't let anybody get in your way. Most of all, don't let yourself get in your way. <laughs> That's my biggest challenge. Um, keep doing it. And live creatively.